Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to the district, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, and we extract the signal from the noise we're here. This is day two of the Nutanix dot next conf, hashtag next conf. Chris Hsu is here, sorry, Calvin Hsu is here, VP of Product Marketing at Citrix. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, So to be here. So, you're up on stage earlier today, right? A um, lot of good action here at the show. Talk about Absolutely. Citrix and what you guys are doing here. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think Citrix, um, Nutanix, we've had a, a partnership going back for quite a while. Um, I think uh, you know, what really brought us together were customers that were um, actually trying to solve this issue of how do I implement VDI and how do I you know, do this better, right? There has to be a better way. Um, and uh, it's funny, we were just you know, talking with Chad a little bit before about you know, how many different infrastructure pieces and how many different um, components there are to learn in order to do VDI. And that was one of the things that always kind of stood as a barrier to adoption in, in some of the early days, you know, going back, I don't know, several years now. And it would say, um, well, you got to have be an expert in networking, you got to be an expert in storage, you got to know, you know all the server-side infrastructure, the virtualization goes with it, and then you got to also know the desktops and the app parts of it and how to manage all of that. Um, and uh, so, you know, in my experience, it was, it was all that technical knowledge, but it was, also, um, it was also the people, right? So you also had to bring those people to the table. You would have one VDI project, you know, go and talk to a customer, and we're going to do a pilot for you know, 200 people to start and there'd be 20 people in the room, because everybody had you know, different areas of responsibility. Um, and so as Nutanix has evolved, and the whole idea of hyperconverged and HCI has come around, that's really been some of the basis of where VDI is kind of getting that, that um, second booster of, in, in its life cycle here, where they're realizing that you know, it could just be a few people that are responsible for that HCI infrastructure can deploy the, the BDI, um, and now they have a, a more simple, reliable way of implementing that solution. So, um, I mean, so that's kind of what, even when I go back to the converged infrastructure world, that's, VDI was the one, like, foothold use case with, you know, V blocks in the early days, and HPE stuff, or HP then. Um, and, you know, I have to say, I have to ask both of you guys, because you know this business really well, and you're obviously a VDI expert, but when you talk to customers, they get really excited about VDI. They're like, hey, this is a great use case. We're going to, we're doing VDI, VDI, VDI. It was a big, big project effort. When you talk to analysts, they're like, ah, oh, VDI, so boring. What's, the, what is it about VDI that there's this bifurcated opinion base, right? Analysts, ah, oh, okay, but customers eat it up. What, what's going on? What, unpack that for us, Calvin. Well, I mean, an analysts don't necessarily feel the day-to-day -day pain of managing a desktop, yeah. right? <laughs> that's and that's true. what it is, <laughs> right? So <laughs> for them, it's a... Well it's said. A, <laughs> it's a truth. Well, actually, I, I, know, I know some analysts that actually did that job, and so they're the ones that are still excited about it, right? Yeah. But in general, like once you get past the idea of, um, you know, that uh, consulting a client on the complexities and you know how do you choose a vendor and and then it comes down to a few basic things. It's which one's going to deliver the best employee experience um, with the solution, um, which one's going to be the best you know operationally to manage, and then sort of their job is done. But then, you know, from an IT admin perspective, it's like they're still every day they're managing a new application update, a new desktop image, and it doesn't end right, um, and that's dozens and dozens of hours out of every week, every month that you spend. Right, let's hear from right, the analyst. Dave, <laughs> it was called VDI fatigue. Every year <laughs> was the year That's of true. VDI, you know. <laughs> I think we've gotten beyond that because I, I tell you, from my viewpoint, it was, wait, it was this mess of a stack and we're going to fix that. Oh wait, now storage is the mess. Yeah. Now Flash is going to solve that. Oh wait, mobile uh, adoption is the, you know, the barrier yet the opportunity, uh, you know, how do we modernize our applications, the changing workforce, mobile workforce, uh, there were always the next, the next, the next, the next, the next thing, and uh, it reminds me of our conversation with Deeroj, you know, it was like, 
you know, we're never finished, and a lot of it was, it was this big category of, you know, you talk about the user experience, as I think, think what Citrix is focused yeah. on, uh, and how do we make that simpler, and you know, so many analysts, the other thing from an analyst is most analysts focus on a piece of it, and this is very different. I know some analysts focus on like, you know, user experience, and let's look at the application, that's probably closer to where VDI is than, right, if you ask the storage guys, they're like, ah, VDI. If you ask the, you know, the desktop people, they're like, wait, my fine place is fine, so you know, right, it, it's right. that, it, it was a really complicated problem, but it's very different today uh, well, than it was, and I have to think that with Nutanix, it is, must have changed a lot in the last five years. Absolutely, and well, I think the other thing is, that's funny is, you know, is thinking back to like 2008, right? Analysts called the VDI game really early, so that's what like you're saying, every year was the year of the VDI. Before anybody was deploying it in any sort of size, <laughs> you know, they were already saying, you know, it's a, you know, an X gazillion billion dollar market, and, and that, and it, I think it's, it's taken a while for the customers. The customers are still just trying to deal with some very basic desktop um, management issues today. And, uh, and you know, they're probably lagging behind the industry and analysts by three to five years, I'd say, right? Um, but what I hear now is um, Windows 10 is coming around the horizon. How am I going to manage Windows 10 updates? Um, I've got an Office 365 deployment project on my hands. How am I going to get this out, all out? How am I going to get the functionality that every one of my um, end users needs? Um, and it comes around, it's like VDI is a great answer for that. It's a, it's a great way to solve that issue. Calvin, one of the things that we hear from Nutanix customers, I, they love the kind of one-click simplicity, one-click update, and I hear about you know, Windows 10, it's like the rollout of the next thing, and you know, where, yeah. where things break. Uh, how are Citrix and Nutanix working together to, to, to solve some of these challenges? Yeah, I think um, th that approach of one click, the, the automation, um, you know, the, both the blueprinting types of technologies that we're pulling together, um, all that sort of automation is really um, important for, uh, for this type of environment. Um, you know, I, I think the, the, we're, we're both willing to pull together solutions that really then drive that simplicity for, um, for both the infrastructure and, uh, and the management um, ongoing uh, of, that, of that solution. Um, it's like for example, you know, we're working together on what we're calling the Citrix Workspace um, Appliance. Right, and that's, for us it's not a product name, that's a really a program, it's, it's a way of defining um, an HCI infrastructure like Nutanix, and they're jumping on board with this, um, to be able to point that thing at the Citrix cloud and then download all the resources that it needs in order to run a Citrix workload on it. Right? So it, it's a very automated way of getting um, stood up so that not only is the deployment of the infrastructure automated and simple, um, but placing that workload on it and getting it set to manage and then even running it and operating it is more like running and operating a um, you know, cloud service than it is even operating uh, you know, a local infrastructure yeah. for it. Well, one of the things, uh, David Floyer from Wikibon has done a lot of analysis saying if we can get to, uh, it, it's basically a, a single managed entity is where he calls it. So I, I can have the entire thing you know, comes out, you know, not just the infrastructure but all the way through the stack you know, not only does that really help, you know, your deployment, but you know, the, the overall kind of time to value, you know, yep. customer experience is, you know, just tremendously improved. Tell, tell us, you know, how you're I, helping to kind of reach that vision. Yeah, well, I think it, it's time to value, but it's also um, making BDI accessible to more customers, right, and more segments of the market. Um, the types of things that BDI solves, you know, uh, security, manageability, um, those aren't just enterprise problems, right? Even mid-sized companies, they have security concerns, and for them it's actually probably even more dramatic, like they have a breach there and it's catastrophic for the company, not just, uh, you know, we're, we're delayed by a few hours. Um, and, and so, it, it, you know, having that simplicity and then making that whole thing, um, you know, easier to deploy and, and faster, but not just easier to deploy, but on day two it's easier to manage ongoing. Um, those things are, are you know, so, getting into tension again. So for years, I remember I've been to Citrix Synergy, been to a bunch of VMware, you know, VM Worlds, talked to customers, and it was always a two horse race between those two companies. And uh, Citrix was like secretariat, and VMware was like devil is due. You probably never heard of devil is due. <laughs> Pretty good horse, but not secretariat. And you guys, Citrix was the you know, dominant player in that marketplace. What's the competitive situation today? It seems like you know, VMware's made some acquisitions, has, maybe caught up, maybe has some advantages. What, what, how, how do you see them as a competitor? Uh, so I think where, um, it's interesting because I think the, 
what really happens in the competitive space now is that it becomes less about VDI versus VDI and like what features are in each one. Um, although I, you know, talk for hours, I think there's still you know, a bunch of differentiation in there. Um, you know, earlier talking about user experience. I, I think the way we're looking at this market and what's happening to it right now is less about sort of user experience in the sense of a classic protocol versus protocol sense and a technical sense, and more about, um, and I, I use, I'll use the term more and more often about employee experience, right? So it's not just um, what is the performance of my virtual desktop when I'm on XYZ device over a certain network, it is what happens that first time I give an employee a resource or a, a, a virtual desktop or a mobile application or access to a SaaS application or an internally hosted web application through a virtual browser and they go in and they, they want to get work done. Right? So um, the experience of that employee is now not just one of these technologies, it is what we refer to as workspace technologies. It's everything I need from the applications to the files that I want to use to the workflows that I want to kick off um, and, and I think that will be the new area of differentiation. I think that, again, that's where we, we want to move Great. far Cal forward. Calvin, what should we be expecting to see from Citrix and Nutanix going forward, long partnership, and you know, how, how does it improve even more for customers? Uh, I think you know, the, the stuff that um, Nutanix has uh, announced here um, with the, you know, the whole hybrid cloud strategy, I think that very much is in alignment with our um, philosophy on, um, on the hybrid cloud approaches for customers. Um, so I would expect to see a lot more in, in, in that collaboration area. Um, there's lots more that we can do um, on the NetScaler side of the business from networking and, and you know, enabling the reliability of a lot of these network connections as people become, um, you know, I love that concept of the, the core, the distributed and the edge cloud, right? And all of that's going to need interconnectivity and, and security and, and reliability. Um, and you know, more of the same on making VDI simpler for, um, for all customers of all sizes. I think we're just at the cusp of um, you know, we've got this automation plan going in, we're creating the workspace appliance and the simplicity there. Uh, I think there's a lot more we can do, um, you know, again, from day two perspective, operationally, as I keep going and I'm growing this thing and I'm managing my images and I'm managing applications and growing the infrastructure, um, increasing performance, taking on different types of workloads, um, there's lots more we can do on, in that area. What is the all Citrix stack workplace appliance? Right, so um, that, it's really the, uh, you know, um, Nutanix has uh, announced support for Zen Server. Um, and for us, um, you know, Zen Server, uh, we've really done a transformation of that technology over the last couple of years, where we've taken what was a general platform virtualization solution, and we've really specifically targeted at our workloads, at Zen Apps and Desktop, Netscaler, um, and uh, making it the best virtualization platform for our, um, for our solutions. Um, why did we do that? We did that because um, there's going to be certain things that we need out of that layer from an innovation standpoint, whether it's supporting graphics, which we were the first to do across all the major chip vendors, um, virtual um, GPUs, um, coming up with uh, new security paradigms like being able to do deep hypervisor introspection and um, uh, identify um, day one malware attacks before they um, you know, even uh, infect any of the machines. Um, you know, those sorts of innovations become really important that we can drive and having control over Zen Server, we're able to do that. Um, and so through the partnership with, um, with Nutanix and getting their support on that as well, then all the joint Nutanix and Citrix customers uh, can take advantage of that innovation. Um, so now they also have at their disposal everything that Nutanix is putting into HV, everything we're putting into Zen Server, um, and being able to manage it that way. So um, in the, uh, the workspace appliance um, you know, sort of reference guide for, for building this, um, the, uh, you know, one of the things we focus on is the, the Zen Server component of it and being able to have um, that innovation coming from Citrix as part of that solution. Great. Calvin, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate your time and Thank your you. insights. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good to see you. All right, keep it right there, buddy. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from .next, hashtag nextconf. This is theCUBE.